Hi there. Welcome to the 2019 Motor Trend Best Driver's Car. This year, it's a real smorgasbord of new performance cars. Everything from a million dollar all carbon fiber McLaren to a Lamborghini SUV to a Toyota Supra. And we finally brought a Hellcat. But not just any Hellcat, the Red Eye. All 800 horsepower of it. May the best car win. Okay, so this is part one of Best Driver's Car. Might be the most important part of all. These are road cars after all, so we have an amazing stretch of road and we get to drive up and down it as fast as we can. The police are here to make sure no one gets in our way. It's gonna be great. Yeah, so we're on Highway 198 and what's cool is cars here are gonna really shine and they'll be a great road car and then they'll go to the track and they'll kind of fall apart. So it's always interesting to see the, the mix. Yeah, so the racetrack is to come, but today it's all about this hill climb. True. Now, which car do you want to drive first? Anything but the Urus, basically. Oh, come on! <laughs> All right, well, you're in the red BMW. <laughs> okay, cool. It's a Toyota. This must be the most talked about car of 2019, the new Toyota Supra return of an icon. This car has actually been developed in conjunction with BMW. There's the bones of a really, really good car here. But over the course of these next few days, we're going to find out if that potential actually translates into something really, really, really good and deserving of the super name. While the super might be in question, the Hellcat sure ain't. We've always loved Dodge's more power Psycho, and the Red Eye version is that much better. I think a lot of people don't realize with the Red Eye what Dodge changed, and, and they just did a great job on the suspension. And that's really the key difference between this and other Hellcats. <laughs> Falcon just flew overhead, probably an eagle, just saluting America. That's what this car does. The Red Eye is pure Americana, that's for sure. But I'm hoping the Bentley Continental GT can do a bit of flag waving for us Brits too. You can't hear much of that V8, but it's got 542 horsepower, so it absolutely rips along the straights. Just gonna tap the road. It's really impressive. But this car doesn't seem to conform to normal rules, like, you know, the laws of physics, things like that. Going in, I thought I'd much prefer the Bentley to the M2 competition. Turns out, like Jethro often is, I was wrong. Woo. This little Beamer is turning into a favorite. There's so much torque that the second you go to the throttle, it just grips up, puts the power down well. Well, the M2 is good, it's pretty run of the mill. How about something a bit more rare? You may be tempted to think that the track Focus Jaguar Project 8 is a perfect fit for Highway 198. And you'd be right! With nearly 600 horsepower and an extra grippy all-wheel drive system, the muscular Big Cat tore up the hill with authority. Speaking of rare and expensive, have you met my friend Senna? It's purple and it only costs a million bucks. Very quick, I'm already at 120. Golly! Listen to that! It's so loud in here! I can't hear myself! It's, it's, it's like a scramjet. The brakes are, they, they move your stomach. It's crazy! Luckily, there's 780 horsepower to get me back up to speed. From the ridiculous to the, well, more ridiculous. And this one, calls itself a Lamborghini. Well, I can't believe they put me in this one because everyone's been raving about this Lambo all day long and I am pretty much pre-programmed to hate it. But for a huge SUV, it goes quickly. It's good, but it ain't right. 
Oh, I feel bad. Maybe put Johnny in this one. Johnny loves this thing. Jethro seems happy, reasserting his ignorance, but to me, the Urus is unbelievable. However, the AMG GT 63S isn't much smaller or lighter than the Urus, but it has some serious moves. The four-wheel drive system gives a really neutral balance, the rear-wheel steering helps shrink the car, and the engine is a monster. It's maybe the best super sedan on sale right now. It wouldn't be best driver's car without a Porsche 911. This one hasn't got a massive fixed wing or a name like GT3, but it is an all new generation. And let's face it, it's pretty much bound to be brilliant. In terms of the chassis, the balance, damping, steering, brakes, how do you compete? I think that's the challenge for everything else this week. Can you beat the 911? Jethro's obviously in denial, but I'm not hiding a thing when it comes to my love of the gorgeous DBS Superleggera. There's power dripping out of its fender vents. Monster people, simply a monster. That said, we really do wish there was one more damper setting, as the big old gal could use a touch more body control. Still, if BDC were just about what's most desirable, I'd be leaving in the ass. Here we are, BMW M850i. And yes, we wanted the M8, but it's not out yet. But what's cool is 526 horsepower. Wow, there's thrust in this thing. There's just torque everywhere. It's just a question of damping. And that, I think, is where the car is letting me down a bit as a driver's car. And again, it's not their sportiest version. So I almost feel bad saying, ah, I wish it was sportier, because there is a sportier one. Final contender bucks the trend for performance-enhancing tech like four-wheel drive and rear-wheel steering. And you know what? We don't mind one bit. You might notice I'm having to uh, move this weird lever contraption down here. I'm in the Shelby GT350 and it is the only car at BDC with a manual gearbox, which means to me it gets extra points straight away. Listen to it red. It's sort of back to basics, but remixed with this really modern performance just beat the car up, throw it into corners. It's so composed for a Mustang. It's a Mustang, for God's sake. It's called Best Driver's Car, and I think some of them are driving you a little bit, but this one, you have to get stuck in. You have to get stuck in. After a solid day of flinging the 12 cars up and down 198, certain things begin to come into focus. Specifically, our two front runners, the Shelby GT350 and the Porsche 911 Carrera S. But, Best Driver's Car is more than just a road test, it's a complete vehicle evaluation. And therefore, in the interest of completeness, we're heading to a racetrack. But not just any racetrack, one of the very best on earth, Laguna Seca. Now, what's so cool about coming to a track as opposed to driving on the road is something we like there might be not so good here and vice versa. While all the contenders get some Randy laps, for the purposes of this story, there are six cars that we're interested in moving forward. Number one is the McLaren Senna. Why? Well, last year, the Porsche GT2 RS set the production car lap record with Randy Post behind the wheel. One minute, 28.3 seconds. If any vehicle on earth can beat that Porsche, it's the Senna. Next up, the all-new seventh generation Porsche 911 Carrera S, the refreshed and surprisingly excellent Shelby GT350, the Jag Project 8, the killer AMG, and despite Jethro's howls, the Lamborghini Urus. And now it's time for them hot laps. First up, powered by Bolognese and Bovington Tears, the Lamborghini Urus. Did I mention how little Death Row cares for this thing? He just doesn't get it. Luckily, the rest of us do. Of course, that's on the road. On the track, could be a completely different story. Powerful engine, a lot of torque. Good 
We want that inside curb. There you are, folks. Randy Pope just broke his own production SUV lap record, beating the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio by over two seconds. Pretty good for a 5,000 pounder. The Lamborghini Urus. Really well behaved SUV. Not a sports car yet. Uh, here on the racetrack, the weight shows up in terms of getting the car down pointed to the apex. I actually thought the car was great on the street with aggressive driving. The track, it's just a little too much for the Lamborghini. Well done, Lamborghini. Now, let's get serious. It's time for the Senna. We are hoping this thing will break the lap record. GT2 RS did a 128.3. Um, it's got to be two seconds a lap quicker. It's a million dollars. So much aero. We race mode and see how much lower it gets. Again, like yearly clockwork, the ageless one, Randy Popes, has set another production car lap record at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. All right, well, that was a lot of work, but, but it was bloody fast. Were you, were you watching you. Your, your lap time? Uh, yes, yeah, I was. Yeah, we noticed that last lap. is like, oh, he's really on. I was working it and working it and working it, you know, a little bit more at a time. And like for the corkscrew, I go all the way up that hill, go to the brake, I'm like, I'm not going to make it. And then it goes, and I'm like, oh, I made it. McLaren did it. They did it ugly with the Senna only beating the Porsche GT2 RS by seven tenths of a second, but they did it. Congratulations. And now, the two quickest and most track focused family cars you can buy the Jaguar Project 8 and the Mercedes AMG GT63 S. That's about as well as I can drive the Jaguar Project 8. All right, well, <clears throat> the Jaguar Project 8 just went around Laguna Seca quicker than any four-door vehicle ever has, including the previous record holder, the Jaguar Project 8 that Randy drove. Now, that car was pre-production. He didn't like it very much. This car 
full production, much better. We all love it. Let's go talk to Randy. That's what's fun about records. You break them. You know? Oh, yeah, Keep that's going. what they're for. Yeah. Records are for breaking. Cool. Great car. Really enjoyed driving it. Has a little too much understeer in the middle of the corner and a little too much oversteer on the entry sometimes. <laughs> I want it to be just right. Well, hey, congrats again. Thanks, John. Now go do it again. Problem for Jaguar is that AMG. If they get that AMG right, sorry, Jaguar, you're gonna have like, you know, 15 minutes of glory and then it's all AMG's day. Andy Warhol famously said, everyone gets 15 minutes of fame. The Project 8 got to reassert its title of quickest four-door around Laguna Seca for about 60 minutes. Then, Randy climbed into that AMG. Torque. Slow on the brake response, but it's got the grip. Got her slowed down. Dime in the corner. Give me a gear. And it's it's close. <laughs> it comes off the corner well. Good launch. All right, we have a new four-door production car left record holder. Holy cow. Wow. That's quicker than a 458 Italia. That's quicker than a Lexus LFA, 997 GT 3 RS. How do you beat a $188,000 Jaguar with a $190,000 AMG? Nice workout, Falterbach. We said going in that it was the Mustang and the Porsche's race to lose. With that in mind, let's take a look at their laps. I've ever had a car that would take third gear all the way from turn five to turn six. And then up here in the corkscrew is the best corner for this car. Strong braking, good pedal feel, no fade, really fun track car. It works. The Shelby's lap is downright impressive. One minute, 36.83 seconds, not only puts it ahead of the more powerful $188,000 Project 8, but it's nearly on par with real, actual supercars like the Lexus LFA and Acura NSX, as well as not far off the world-stomping R version of itself. One thing to note, driving a manual on a track is fast fading and becoming a dying art. Last, but certainly not least, is the Porsche 911. My prediction, quick. <laughs> Power down. Now I'm 
Elmoy said. Elmoy said. Right on the edge. 1 minute 35.52 seconds puts it a tenth of a second off of a Lamborghini Aventador. Porsche 911, Carrera S. Better balance than the Mustang. It's a very different experience. I don't want to stop. Let's keep going, okay? More importantly to potential customers, the 992 version of the Carrera S is nearly a full second quicker a lap than the 991 it replaces. You can't stop progress. Some years, it's harder to chop down the BDC field than others. This is not one of those years. Almost from hour one, two cars emerged as the driver's cars to beat. I need to stress that last bit. Despite Jethro's repeated slurs and slanders, the Lamborghini Urus is a fabulous super SUV. Likewise, the AMG GT63S is one of the most impressive, if not the most impressive sedans either of us has ever driven. The Bentley feels like a Nissan GTR wrapped up in 14 cows worth of green leather. The M2 competition is a glorious little pocket rocket. And I may or may not be hatching plans to steal an Aston Martin. But best driver's cars? For now, there are two. Be honest, how surprised are you that the Porsche 911 has made it to the top two? Um, I have to say, I'm not very surprised at all. And I guess there's a temptation to think it's disappointing that the 911 does it again. But they just have this quality and you have to recognize it. It doesn't matter how you go in hoping that something else will come along and knock the 911 out of the top two just can only tip your hat to these guys. The Mustang has its work cut out. Time for some candidness. Ever since the Ford Mustang got an independent rear end, I haven't liked it very much. Look at last year's best driver's car. The GT Performance Pack 2 came in dead last, 12 out of 12. Well, for 2019, that's all changed. I mean, think about what this Shelby had to do to get here. It had to drive better than not just the BMW M2 competition and the Supra, but like the Senna. It had to be a better car to drive than that. You look at the rest of the field and it's all just turbocharged nonsense. This, no way. Just revs and revs and revs and revs and it's, it's just fantastic. It's also got a manual transmission and lots of people argue that if you don't have a manual, it's not a real driver's car. I'm not in that camp but a good manual is a thing of beauty, and this is a great manual. Then there's this noise. Yeah! <laughs> Come on, baby! What is it about 911s? I think it's that Porsche actually care about this stuff. They care about steering feel. They care about brake response and brake feel and damping and all that geeky stuff. 
but all that geeky stuff is what makes a great driver's car. It just gives you an incredible amount of response, but you marry that with this rear stability and traction, and you end up with something that is just devastatingly effective. And the 911, the old formula that never gets old. And seriously, hats off to Shelby, Ford, SVT, whoever's tuned in this thing. Phenomenal. Hard to explain how well this thing drives. I mean, look, we've got it up here with a Porsche. You know, after nine days spent with these cars, I think I know how to end this one. I think I know the conclusion. We came, we drove, we loved them both, but when it comes to the 2019 Motor Trend Best Driver's Car, there can only be one. I know what you're thinking. I can read your mind. You're thinking, this is it. This is the year that a Shelby wins Best Driver's Car. This is finally the time when a Ford Mustang brings home the gold. Except, Porsche turned up with a new 911, and you know what that means. It means it's good. It's annoyingly good. <laughs> we shouldn't be annoyed though, come on. Everything we've thrown at this Porsche, it's excelled. It's unbelievably composed on the road. It's so fast on the track. It's just Porsche doing what Porsche does. Yeah, you know, you'd think that there'd be something wrong with it because it's a brand new car. You'd think that there'd be an exposed Achilles heel, and there isn't. I didn't find one. So as great as this Shelby GT350 is, and it is really great, the 2019 Motor Trend Best Driver's Car is this bright yellow Porsche 911 Carrera S. And you just know next year they're coming back with something even better. So for everyone else, time to up your game. <laughs>